‫הקשורים לי גם גאינה, ‫תשמעי שיקרו לבנך. שירתניהם <laughs> שירדה קרישנה פרדם, שקרה ביתה, שיפישה קם ביתם שם. היי קרישנה גורנו, שינו דין לבנו, שירת פרדי. בואו פשע גורתה קם תרעדה, קם תרמסתתה. תפתה קם שנה ושבאנשתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתתת
And because Uda will speak it to the sages later of Badarika, Badikara, Badarika Shun, is called uh, Udav Gita, spoken by Udav. But, uh, and yes, in this Udav Gita, there are many, many instructions for self-realization. That we know Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita, hmm? that uh, with all the essential instructions. But this is like a second Gita, the Udav Gita, but it's going in many many points, of, of, of many levels, it's going deeper, deeper. And without the preliminary knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita, it will be difficult to understand it. Therefore, I will speak first about the knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita. So what is the purpose of what I'm going to present here? That uh, we know in Bhagavad Gita 64, 65, Krishna says to Arjuna in the sixth chapter, with the mind you can uplift yourself or can degrade yourself. The mind can be your friend or your enemy. That Bandhu uh, Atmatmanas, that's your Yata, Yanatma, Atmanas, Bandhu Atmatmanas, that's your Yanatma, Atmanas, Sutta, Anatmana, Tutta, Sutre, Sutre. It's Bandhu Atman Manastas Yaya Natman Atnat Sita Anatmanas to Satrit Fable to Tatman Satrit. The mind is your enemy. When it's uncontrolled, your greatest enemy. And the mind is your best of friends. When it is controlled. That, uh, that's instructions for the yogis. And Krishna says, Sita Atmana Prasantasma Paramatma Samaita. If you can control the mind, Sita Atmana, the mind is controlled. What happens? Yeah. Sita Atmana Prasanta. Yeah. Peaceful. And when you are peaceful, completely peaceful inside, no material desires. Completely peaceful, completely purified. No, no, usually that takes a few lifetimes, but then that if the heart is pure, completely peaceful, you find Krishna in the heart as Paramatma. And you will and you will understand that he controls everything. He controls material nature. So, that uh, the mind can bring us far, further away in materialistic entanglement, or can one, or, or can one bring, bring one closer to Krishna? If it brings one further away in material entanglement, one suffers more and more. And the more one comes closer to Krishna, that the more happy we become. That, uh, so, this is the instruction of Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. At the end, he, he summarizes everything. He says, Man mana, always think of me. That's the purpose. Always think of Krishna and never forget him. That's a controlled mind. Because then we see we become very humble. Because then we see that Krishna controls everything. And we are not. That, uh, so, first, today I want to make you aware that everyone in this world 
is more or less crazy, acting out of false ego, identifying with the body, which we are not. If you think something you are not, you are crazy. Most people are. Only a few pure devotees, they have a controlled mind. They are not controlled by the mind. Most people are controlled by their mind. They think they are their mind. That's the end. Because yoga is about controlling the mind. If some, something controls the mind, you are not a mind. <laughs> so that's the first thing. But one who has no spiritual practice, he cannot take distance from the mind. It will not be possible. He goes from birth to birth, identifying with bodies. Some he becomes an animal, some a higher being, some an ant. It's reward. Every, and everyone in this world thinks they are the body. That's we will analyze this workings of false ego. First from Bhagavad Gita, and then hear what Krishna says in the Uddhav Gita, on both levels. Not, uh, and then, when we understand what false ego is, we can understand how the, our own mind is cheating us, and disempowers us. We think we are a victim. And this person has done that to me. <laughs> and all this happened. The victim mentality. That we have to overcome. First we will understand how the mind brings us to that victim mentality. That's for tomorrow. And in the last session, we will... Uh, learn how to overcome this victim mentality and make spiritual progress. So that's the idea. That uh, now I'm going back to the basic knowledge. We say that's basic knowledge, but it takes many years to realize just that basic knowledge from Bhagavad Gita. That's my experience. That we think we understand, but the next moment we are acting as the body and the mind again. <laughs> so we didn't understand. We did not understand. Because understanding, understanding Bhagavad Gita is a process. First, you have the theoretical knowledge. That, uh, and then you get so many spiritual techniques explained. But you have to understand how, this, how to apply how it is applied to, to us in our lives and how to apply it and bring it in practice. So first you have to hear, then you have to understand, then you have to understand the, the principle, then you have to understand how to bring it in practice, then you have to bring it in practice, then you must have a certain result. If that result is not there, you have done something wrong. Using in that process, <clears throat> you need you need the help of a spiritual master. But, uh, you cannot just learn it from the book here. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, that we know my partner, by Krishna Savior, for production, take on John and start production. You need to take shelter of <clears throat> a spiritual master. Inquire from him. Humbly ask questions how to bring this knowledge in practice. <clears throat> Suppose I, 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 I read a big, I, I'm reading a, a big book on how, <clears throat> how to drive a bus. So I know everything theoretically. Now I'm going to drive a bus. Who, who comes with me on the bus? No, I will not. 
A spiritual life is like that. You must learn that from those who have realized it. Otherwise, <clears throat> just theoretical knowledge. But uh, we will try our best to explain this point today, but real ego was false ego. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, first, yeah, he says to Arjun that uh, he says, you, Arjun, and all these kings here on the battlefield, to me, <clears throat> we have existed in the past, we are existing now, we will never stop to exist. And the first thing we have to understand, Krishna says we are eternal. The soul is eternal. That, and that's explained also in the in, in 220 in Bhagavad Gita. The soul never takes birth. The soul never came into being and will never exist, cease to exist. That, uh, that's a good news. We are eternal. The bad news is. <clears throat> but we are in this body, Arjun, and this body changes from boy to youth to old age. And then finally you need to accept another body and you must tolerate all these changes. And Krishna says, the body dies. One who dies is sure one who takes birth is sure to die. Nobody survives him. But one who dies is sure to take birth, Krishna says, to take birth again. According to the consciousness you have created during this life, you get a new body. Now, why do we transmigrate from one body to another? Why is that happening? Can we stop that? That's so for this we must give up false ego. As long as we act as being the body, we transmigrate. We have to start acting as a spirit soul. Acting on a spirit soul, to act as a spirit soul, you must know who you are. Real ego. What does Krishna say about real evil? Mamadam Shoji Veloke Jiva Buddha Sanatana. All the living entities, all the spirit souls are my part and parcels, Krishna says. Eternally separated part and parcels. Krishna says Sanatana. We are eternal again. We are eternal. But we are separated from him. He is the source of everything. That and we are a little part of him. So we are made of the same quality, but he of the not of the same qua quantity. Krishna is a big soul. And that uh, mm. Nitya Nityananam Sitasa Sitananam. That's a and a quote of Shilpa from one of the Puranas and it says, yes, Krishna is the big eternal among all eternals. And he maintains all the other eternals, his part and parcel. That's from the Purana. So, to act as a spirit soul, because first you must know what's really evil. To act as a, so a spirit soul means understanding that we are part and parcel of Krishna and that we are not Krishna. Krishna is the source of everything and the control of everything. We are a part of him. So we are, we are both eternal. We have never taken birth. It's no begin, no end. Something that's already something we cannot get in this world. Everything has a beginning and an end. But we have no beginning and an end. The soul. Just 
revive material because this spiritual knowledge you cannot understand with a material brain. It's not possible, material brain. It's matter. With matter you cannot understand spirit. How with spiritual knowledge about our relationship with Krishna, how can we understand it? Only on the spiritual platform. Where is the soul? It's in the heart, Krishna says. In the area of the heart. heart. It is antimatter. Antimatter. It's there kept by the subtle body under the direction of Krishna in the heart. Super soul. It, it keeps it there. That, uh, and uh, this Yes, understanding our position, that's the first thing, who Krishna is, who we are, that, uh, and what our relationship is. Three things we have to understand to act on this kind of path. otherwise you can't. You, you must understand who God is, who we are. And what our relationship is. That's called, in the Vedas, that's called Sambandha Gyan, knowledge of our relationship with Krishna. That, uh, because our consciousness comes from the soul. The, we have the soul, the source of, the, of, the, of, of consciousness comes from the soul. As long as the soul is in the body, Consciousness is in the body. Then when is my last breath, this, then the soul comes out and Krishna takes the soul with him, with our subtle body. It's gone. Then there's no life anymore in the body. Should be clear. That is the source of life it comes from the spiritual platform, from the soul. As long as the soul is in the body, there is life. So this basic knowledge must be understood. But now Krishna says, yeah, in, in the Gita, in the Vedas, we are in the heart. This little spiritual spark is there. One ten thousand of the tip of a hair is described. But he, even when ten thousand of the tip of the hair is antimatter, you cannot see it with material instruments. No, not possible. It's in, it's in the heart. But we are not alone there in the heart. There's also Paramatma, a local aspect of Krishna, an expansion of Krishna, who, who comes with us. And this Paramatma is what the yogis find in their heart, finally. They, they find, they come in contact with Paramatma. And this Paramatma is in the heart and is an expansion of Krishna. And what is his, his function? Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Maya Dyaksena Prakriti Chucha Chacha Chacha. Maya Dyaksena, I am the controller of Maya, of the Ita, of the material energy. I control the material energy. It's in the heart. Krishna says that in different verses. 1861, Krishna says, Isparasava Buddham, Rita, I'm the Ishvara. I'm the controller of all living entities. I'm situated in everyone's heart, Krishna says. Ramayam Savabhutanam. Yantaradi Maya. And from within the heart, I control everything 
I, I control the yantrao, the body of the living entity. Who is, who is going from one place to another in this material world? Krishna in the heart controls everything what we do. So, but we all think I'm doing everything. That uh, I'm going to make my own life. And uh, yes, who will stop me? Everything depends on me. That's what people think. That uh, they have so many plans. That uh, do, do your plans always always come true that you may? That uh, if your plans not, are not coming true always, and I'm not so much in control. But Narada Muni says in the Bhagavatam, Tasheva Utapayoto, Tapayote, the Kovita, the Lapya, the Alpamatamya, Utapayota, the Lapya, the Dukata, Sukam, yeah. The Shiva, Kayati, to go to the Lapyati of Pamatamia Pagna. It's one. It's an interesting verse. It speaks of instructs Vyasadi. It's the Shiva, Kayati, to go to the Lapyati of Pamatamia Pagata, the Lapyati to go from Anya to Shkam, Kalina Saveda, Ramir, Rabira, Ramasa. This verse says, from the highest to the whole, to, to the lowest planet, that, uh, yeah, one should seek for that happiness, which is not available from, in this material world, not from the highest to the lowest planet. And what, what uh, happiness is concerned in this world, it will come on its own accord, as distress comes or on its own accord. Who wants distress here? That, uh, but it comes. But, uh, we don't want it. It comes. But, uh, of this, in the same way, Narada Muni says, Happiness will come. We don't have to seek it. It will come. It are all the reactions of your past lives. That's what Krishna says in the Bible. This life, all our experiences, is a reaction from the actions in our previous life and nothing you can do about it. Thus the happiness and distress you will get it's, the, it's predestined by your birth. You want to know your happiness and distress? That uh, if you have a good Vedic astrologer, he will calculate your karma, karma and tell you the happiness and distress. But mostly we don't need it. I know I'm 60. Last six, 63 years, last 63 years in my life, I know my happiness and distress. And I know that the future will not be much different. <laughs> but the happiness and distress is all for the body. It's not for, not for us. The soul has nothing to do with it. And where is this happiness and distress experienced? In the mind. There it, it is experienced. But we are not a mind. We believe the mind. We are cheated by the mind. We think it's our happiness and distress. And why are we thinking it's our, our, our happiness and distress? Because we are thinking we are the body. We are the mind. That's me. And we are thinking that for so many lifetimes previous lifetimes. And this mind keeps us in this cycle of birth, death, 
H misses. Why not? Why not? But if we can get rid of this false ego, we come to our real ego. Our real ego is our relationship with Krishna. And executing that relationship with Krishna is called yoga. Yoga means linking up with the Supreme. Yoga. Bhakti yoga is the highest yoga. That, uh, but linking up with the Supreme means you have to know that Krishna is a controller within the heart and respect that. Krishna is in control. Krishna says, is Varasarva, yeah. In all living entities, Krishna says, Saham, I, Redisan, if I'm situated in the heart. Sarvasyasam, Redisan, if it's Mata, Smitra, and for me comes remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. Whatever you know, what appears in your mind, what you know, is Krishna given you. Whatever you forget also, mostly we forget our previous lives. That, but young children may have remembrance. One, two years old. Many times they start to speak about uh, their experience from previous life. Uh, but we forget. It's good that we forget. That uh, in, if you remember all the frustrations of your previous life, you will not be able to live in this life. <laughs> Krishna takes the memory away so that we can start again and try. <laughs> that it would be too too much, too much. And, and there came, and there, you remember there was a fly, and there, there came an, an elephant. <laughs> it's too much. We should not take the memory away. But there is more. Krishna is in the heart. He controls the body. That uh, you control your heartbeat. It's Krishna who controls. There's someone who controls your heartbeat. But you don't control. We eat food. What controls your food? What makes the digestion? We even don't know how it goes. It's Krishna from even the heart who does it. But Krishna goes further. And if you, for the conditioned soul, that is really a shock what Krishna says here in the fifth chapter. They cannot get it. But, uh, that's mentioned in fifth chapter, verses 8 to 12. Naiva kinjit karomiti Yukta manita tatva bit. Pasham shim vans krisham shikam asnam krisham spapas pasam. Palapam vichyam hinan unni sam nim samapi. Indriyas in the art is uvartate tidariyam. A person in the divine consciousness, Krishna says. One who sees things as they are in spiritual consciousness. Although engaged in seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, eating, moving about, sleeping, and breathing. So everyone does that. Huh? We hear, we touch, we smell, we eat, we move about, we sleep. Hmm? Knows within a self that is actually, dot, actually does nothing at all. The soul does nothing of these things. Because while speaking, evacuating, receiving, and opening and closing his eyes, he always knows that the material senses are engaged with their objects and that he is aloof from them. So, I'm now speaking. Am I speaking? Or is Krishna speaking? Who says that Krishna is speaking? 
One, two, three, four, six. And we'll say so that I'm speaking. Yeah, one, one, two, three, four. Okay. Okay. Yeah, both right. <laughs> but but you have to understand that why you are both right. And Krishna explains that in Bhagavad Gita. That he explains that in the 18th chapter, 1814, Adistanam tataka ta karanam sapitak vidam vividas sapitak shasta daivan sarvatra panchanam. So Krishna says that there are five factors for each in each action. Five factors that, uh, that there is the adistanam, there is the body. You must have a body to act, right? And Krishna is the set Maya Dakshina Prakriti. I control the body. Krishna controls the body, not us, not the soul. And then there is another factor, Karanam, the, the senses. That, uh, that's also a material nature as part of the body, also controlled by Krishna in the heart. And then you have the subtle body. We have also a subtle body made of mind, intelligence, false ego, which moves from one body to another. The super soul moves it when we leave the body with the soul. And that includes the mind. And in the mind, different endeavors come up. I want, you think I want to do that, and an endeavor comes up. That's also material nature. That's also Krishna doing. But, uh, we are the fifth factor. The soul is called the karta. It's the doer. The soul is, is described as the doer. And Krishna, but Krishna, he controls the mind, the the subtle body, the, the senses, and the body. So you have five, five factors. Krishna says you have the body, the senses, you have the subtle body with the endeavors to do things, that, uh, and you have the super soul who controls these three. And then you have the karta, the soul. The soul is described as doing things here. How is the soul doing things? What's the action of the soul? Desire. Desire. Attachment. The command attached to something. That's desire. But, uh, so in other words, I desire to speak. I desire to speak. And Krishna in the heart controls the body and fulfills my desires that all these muscles are formed and that, that the right words come out. But I desire. If Krishna does not desire that I speak, I cannot speak. I can get every moment a heart attack if he wants, finished. I cannot. I can desire, but I cannot anymore. Krishna is therefore described as the witness. Witness, he sees our desire. The sanctioner, as a super soul, is a sanction. Without his will, nothing happens in this world. Not a blaze of heart, grass moves. In other words, well, the soul is the doer, but all, everything that the body does, that's done by the super soul. 
So we are not the door. We are only a small door. But uh, we cannot control what I'm going to do next. I may desire. It may happen or not. I desire happiness, but distress may come because it's not my karma. Krishna. But this happen and, and happiness and distress, we have created ourselves. We have created ourselves, this happiness and distress. It's a reaction of our actions in previous lives. And Krishna in the heart knows it perfectly. It's... And it, 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 he controls material natures as such that it is that will happen. You have a certain di di DNA, and that's your body. But so, more subtle than the uh, DNA is a super soul keeps your karma, and that's also in your body. Your body is made of that karma. But if your karma is that, you will get a, a certain disease at a certain time, it will develop. You can try to stop it with med medicines, but it has to come in the disease. You cannot stop it. But Krishna controls the laws of nature. The body goes to six stages. It, is, it takes birth, it, grow, it grows for some time. And uh, it grows, and then you become adolescent, adult, and then you get children, then your body gets old and old again, then dies. And nobody can stop that. That's Krishna's nature, his laws, and he has made the laws that... So it brings up to the point, why are we here? Because we want to control this sense of, of, of being the controller is false ego. Because Krishna controls from within the heart. That, uh, so therefore, the first step to get rid of false ego is Humility. Always. Before we, we want to do something, we know if Krishna is willing. That's the first step. We pray to Krishna, please. Please help me. I will do it for you. That... Uh, so we, therefore, we, for whatever a devotee does, before he does something, he prays to the spiritual master. He prays to Krishna, to Radharani, please. Let me be an instrument of Krishna. Let me not, not think that I'm doing things in this world. All wonderful, wonderful things that happened in this world is Krishna doing. And some deserve it by their karma, others not. That, uh, but good or bad, from the spiritual point of view, it keeps us in this material world. This good and bad is the problem. We think that things in this world are good or bad. But it, it is an invention of the mind. We think it's good or bad. It's our thinking. But there's nothing like good and bad. That uh, there is uh, a farmer. And, oh, this is an old Chinese story. In China was a farmer. And the farmer... He had a son, and um, he had a horse. And one day, his horse ran away. And all the villagers said, that's bad. He lost his horse. That's not good. 
he had he needed this horse to work on the field. Two days later, the horse came back with two other wild horses. Now he had three horses. And the villager, villager, villager said, that's good. That uh, now he has, now he has three, three horses. His son was training this, the farmer's son was training these two horses to tame them, to use them on the land. And while taming them, he broke his leg. And the villagers said, that's bad. He broke his leg. That's not good. But, um... So then, one week later, the uh, representative from the from the emperor came to to draft young people into the army. And but when he looked at the son of the farmer, he said, "With his broken leg, he cannot go to the army." And all the farmers said. That's good. Yeah, it doesn't have to go to the, to the army. <laughs> so for one moment is bad, the other moment is good. <laughs> but, uh, but yes, we invent this good and bad. We think what's good is good, what gives pleasure to the body. And what's bad is what gives pain to the body. So we don't want a uh, want this pain, we want what gives pleasure to the body. So that's people's conception of good and bad. That uh, good and bad. But but soon they will not have this body anymore. They will die. And it's all for the body good and bad. But if we want to make spiritual advancement, we should not live in that consciousness of good and bad of the body. That this good and bad Krishna calls Paripantina in the Bhagavad Gita. It means obstacle. Krishna says there are two obstacles to realize your position as a soul. And that's Raga and Vesha. Raga and Vesha. Attachment and aversion. That attachment and aversion. We think, yes, we are attached to, to what gives pleasure to the body and the senses. And we, are, and we want to give up what gives pain. And that's what people are doing their, their whole life, to get pleasure for the body and, 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 and push, push the pain away. And then the body dies. It's all for the body. And they are not concerned with who they are. And Krishna warns everyone in Bhagavad Gita. When we, when we work just for the pleasure of the senses, when one who lives for the pleasure of the senses, he lives in vain for nothing. But, uh, everything we do in this false ego will get reactions. And we will come entangled in these reactions. That, uh, so this working of this false ego for the conditioned soul is difficult to understand. Why is that difficult to understand? That, uh, because Arjuna is asking that to Krishna. Krishna, you say you have to, I, I have to give up this attachment and aversion, raga and vision. But I cannot overcome it. There's a power that is greater than me. 
I cannot do it, Krishna. What is this power? Why can't I do it? Krishna replies, Kama isha koda isha atsas guna samud bhava masana mana pratna vityami avayanam. The greatest enemy, Krishna, Arjun, is lust. Lust is the greatest enemy. Because what does this lust do to us? Lust means trying to enjoy the body. The greatest lust is the sexual lust. In a, but also eating. Pleasure for the senses. That uh, we want that. We want to give pleasure to the senses and to the body. We want it. And uh, that's the problem. You are attached to the body so much. This lust, what does it do to, to us? It covers our spiritual intelligence. Because the, the soul is the is the cause of consciousness. Consciousness comes from the soul. But that consciousness, if it's contaminated with this lust, we identify with the body. Avritam jnana metanan, jnana nityabharina, kamrupina kanti adushpana alinasya. Avritam, it, it covers. Avritam is covering. Our eternal knowledge that we are a spirit soul, not this body. If you are overcome by this lust, and especially you do activities like attached to sex, attached to eating meat, fish, eggs, just for the tongue killing animals, that uh, attached to intoxication and so on. These are, this covers the consciousness completely. You can, you identify with the animal with the body completely, you become like an animal. An animal can also can, can do nothing else than thinking that is the body, the soul in an animal. It's completely covered. We become like an animal. It makes us acting that for the profit of the body. And you see that people think like that in a conditioned life. You go out here in Halifax and you ask, what, what's the purpose of your life? They will say, enjoy, you live only once. What are you going to enjoy? The body, of course. They think they are the body. And you live only once. Can they prove that? I've never seen a proof on that. I see only proofs of the contrary. Because why, if, if, if there is no soul or everyone is born, then why is there such a difference? One is suffering from the beginning in, in his life in hell and the other person is rich in a rich family and enjoys from the beginning of his life one philosopher said, if God allows that, then he's a monster. That, uh, but no, we are the architect of this life. We are this little, this fifth factor. That uh, we are desiring to enjoy the body. And that's lust. And that comes from us. And that, and what is the result? To spread on all the You want only more and more and more. Never satisfied. They did uh, an investigation, a survey of billionaires. They had one billion. And they asked, what do you want? They said, I want to do two billion. Never satisfied. Always more and more and more and more. And become more and more entangled. And more and more unhappy. But 
material desire, you want to enjoy the body, you just desire it, is the beginning from your unhappiness. So many desires and never peaceful, never peaceful. But if we cultivate such desires. So Arjun heard this and he said, Arjun is a military man. He was on the battlefield. So he's, all his life he's, he's been trained as a military. And he said to Krishna, if this is the enemy, where is this enemy? And Krishna says, the enemy is in your body, in your senses, in your mind, in your intelligence, in the subtle body. But Krishna, how can I kill this enemy? That was his first, Krishna says, before you can do that, you must know that you are the soul. And that above the soul, there is the subtle body, the intelligence and the mind. And above that, there are, there are the senses. And above that, there are the sense objects. And you must know you are not the body, but the spirit soul. Knowledge about the soul is called transcendental knowledge. Transcendental knowledge. And with that transcendental knowledge, you must hear that, Arjun. Because that trans transcendental knowledge explains you how to act as a spirit soul, not a body. And then you must learn to act as a spirit soul. With that knowledge, the soul must tell the in intelligence to engage the mind and senses in yoga, in connecting with Krishna through devotional service, serving with devotion. And when we do, when we do that, we are become purified of this false ego. So this false ego, we become purified, means all the lust, anger, greed, madness, illusion, envy, desire for honor, that uh, and desire for profit, it all is gradually removed from the heart by connecting in yoga. You have different types of yoga. Karma yoga, jnana yoga, astanga yoga, bhakti yoga. But each of these yogas is meant to purify the heart. But the highest is bhakti yoga and the most efficient method. That, uh, that is what Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita. And that is the preliminary knowledge to get rid of this false ego. Now I will go to Udav Gita. Now you have heard this. And I hope you all knew this already. But we have that knowledge in, in mind. So Krishna explains now in Buka, but in Bhagavad Gita that the soul is not connected with the body. But because it's because we are identifying with the mind, we become attached to the body. And the mind means emotions, feelings, and so on. It's like someone goes to a cinema hall. It sits in the cinema hall. And, yeah, something happy, humoristic happened on the screen. And, and everyone in the cinema will start to laugh. But then suddenly there is an accident. And, and oh, they're all crying on the screen. And people in the, in the cinema will also try to start to cry. <laughs> because they are emotionally connected with the film 
But what happens on the screen there? It's just some light going on. That's so, all. But, but they become attached. So our, our mind is also like that. So many ideas come up. And we think that's me, that's my emotion. Something dramatic, ha someone dies in our world to whom we were affected and the mind tells, now we have to cry, we have to feel sad. That's very sad. That, uh... So, just identifying with the mind. And that is, uh, that is false ego. We, the mind is the body. It's connected with the senses. But, uh, so the first step in spiritual life is understanding that I'm not this mind. To realize this mind, you must stop polluting your consciousness, your mind, with this lust. That's the first thing to do, first step. How, how do we do we pollute very heavily our mind? It's by taking in intoxication, eating f meat, fish, eggs, that, uh, and uh, by uh, illicit sex, thinking thinking about sex. That's so bad. Sexual relations are meant for procreation, Krishna. For, for procreation of children, for Krishna. They are not meant for our pleasure, but we take it as our pleasure. So that pollutes the mind very heavily. That uh, this is the first thing, whatever you have. Karma yoga, yana yoga, you must follow these rules or you cannot perform yoga. All these yoga clubs to get rid of fat, nonsense. <laughs> it's nothing to do with yoga. Yoga means connecting with the Supreme and every yoga must follow yam, niyam, astanga yoga. Rules, things to do and things not to do. And these are the things not to do. That's the first thing. Otherwise, you pollute it again and again. So you must live a life of celibacy, even in marriage. That uh, heavy role. When we must learn to control the senses. That's not to do. But what you have to do is linking up with Krishna. Devotional service. How do I link with God? Is, is what we have done now. We have to connect with the divine energy. We have to become a Mahatma to connect with the divine energy. Krishna says, Mahatmanas to Mamparta Devim Pragati Ashita. Mahatmanas to Mamparta means the Mahatmas, the great souls, they know how to connect with the spiritual energy. And how do, do they do that? Satatam kirtiantamam yadanta shadritadvata. Satatam, always kirtan, glorifying the Supreme Lord, coming in co contact with God. Hear from him, from the Vedas, from Bhagavad Gita, from the Bhagavatam, that uh, glorify him by chanting his names, offer you food to him, then the food becomes spiritualized. It's an important practice. If we don't offer our food, we take from Krishna and Krishna without asking permission. And that is, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, one is, then one is a stena, a thief. 
And that's the difference in consciousness we have to, to create. See everything as Krishna's energy, not that we are the center. Spiritual life means Krishna in the center and, and understand we are insignificant, completely dependent on it. That's the difference. The, in the Bhagavatam, the spiritual world is described. And the Paikunta. In spiritual in the spiritual world, everyone thinks of Krishna, of Narayan, every moment. And it's engaged in it's, their consciousness is connected with him. Therefore, they are protected by the spiritual energy. There's no birth, death, old age, and disease. But they are in the material world where we are where we are foolishly identifying with this body. We put ourselves in the center and nobody, everyone is forgotten. God, very rare. Yes, they go to church. Yeah, please give me this, give me that. And then I have that problem. That, and when the problem is solved, okay. But if I have again problem, I will go to church <laughs> and ask God. But otherwise, no consciousness of God in everything what they do. So that is, this consciousness must go. I know I'm desiring, and I desire only what I say, what I speak. Krishna speaks as the super in the heart. And that is for everyone. But, but Krishna is in our heart. And he does not want us to forget him. As long as we forget him, we will not feel happy. That we get some satisfaction. I'm... I, I eat nicely, so the pain of the hunger is, weg, is away, and I think that's my happiness. But we will never be happy if Chris, without Krishna. If you, like, let's say, you do something which is abominable, that uh, out of lust you do something, you murder someone because you want to steal. After doing that, will the murderer feel okay in his heart? No, I feel he will feel great, great um, unhappiness in heart, dissatisfaction, that uh, guilt. As Krishna who says in the heart, that is not good. Every mother here, you serve your children. You serve your children, right? To, why? Out of love. You only want to give. You are not expecting something in return. You only give. And that gives a satisfaction to the heart. Every mother knows that. That gives us satisfaction. Does Krishna in the heart who say that is good? Krishna is in the heart. He's always with us, not far. We just have to purify our heart and give the respect to God what God deserves. He does everything in this world. He deserves every respect. Good is is energy. And if we don't offer this food to Krishna before we take it, then uh, we are a thief and we get karma. But when we offer it to Krishna, no karma. Krishna takes the karma away. Because we respect Krishna. It is your energy. And you have given me this life. And I want to use it humbly in your service. 
I want to please you. That is real ego. Um, understanding we are a servitor of God. And God has his will. And what God wants, he, he says in Bhagavad Gita what he wants. He wants us to become Mahatmas. And follow his directions. And what, is, what are his directions? Man, mana, think of me. Bhagavad Bhakti, call my devotee. Develop love for me. Love. De become my devotee. And then Matsai, worship me. Nam Namaskari, offer me respect. And he, Krishna says, give, give up all other things in this world, other kinds of consciousness. Engage in that consciousness. And, uh, and then Krishna says, I will protect you. I will protect you against taking birth again. I will bring you back to the spirit of world. The place where we belong. We are here like fish on the on, on, on the earth and not in the water. The fish belongs in the water. The fish cannot be happy on the land. It must be in the water. So we as spirit soul are spiritual. And we belong to the spiritual energy, not in this material energy. But because we want to enjoy separate from Krishna, we have gotten this body and we identity, identify foolishly with the body. That, uh, so that is what Krishna says in the beginning. That that we are we are overwhelmed by the constant flow of material experiences it comes through to the mind to our perception of this world and that's everything that exists for us what i see what i hear but what can we see what do we hear like i said what's the cause of your heart beating what's the cause of your digestion what makes the blood going to your veins. That uh, who conducts all the control of these souls in your uh, all these cells, which are also souls in your body? Who is doing that? That uh, everything is going forward but through a perfect plan in this world. Who controls that plan? Yeah. People thinking, I and now, and I want to enjoy now under the sway of lust. They cannot understand their situation. That's due to false ego. To get out of the false ego, we must get out of the control of the mind. And uh, the control of the mind is difficult to attain if we are const constantly absorbed in the miseries of the mind. And the idea is tomorrow to start to explain how to disentangle us from that. Anyway, this is an introduction. I went to basic points. Without these basic points, we cannot understand much of what follows. That uh, but we will go deeper, try to understand what the mind does to us and how to overcome it. Thank you. I just represented what Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita. Nothing comes for me, just for your information. Any question? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Maharaj, for blessing us with your association coming so far. <laughs> uh, so, Maharaj, I have a question. How can we uh, develop steadiness in devotion? Uh, steadiness? Steadiness. Steadiness, yeah. So, devotional service is a process. It starts with uh, 
child of fate. And uh, that fate grows when we associate with the boat with that fate grows when we associate with the bodhis, with the spiritual master, and learn from them how to engage in the in devotional service. Engagement in devotional service is called bhajana kriya. So bhajana kriya means shavana kirtanam vishnu smaranam hearing about Krishna, speaking about Krishna, remembering Krishna, that fixes, fixes your mind to Krishna, and then serving the lotus feet of Krishna, serving the deity of Krishna, praying to Krishna, and surrender your life to the instructions of Krishna. That... Uh, so that's the practice of devotional service. How to bring that in practice, you can learn from devotees here, but how, how then to become steady in devotional service? It's a process. And uh, that's explained in Madhurya Kanambini by Srila Vishwanath Chakrabarti Thakur. And he, he says there are six obstacles to come, come to the point of steadiness in the ocean of service. That uh, so there are different obstacles to overcome and that usually takes some time. That uh, in, in the beginning one fights with Visaya Sangara with controlling the senses. Do you want to follow the principles to mostly giving up uh, eating meat and so that goes quick because we have very nice food, prasadam, that goes quick. But then keeping up intoxication, some may have been smoking, it takes a while to give it up. And uh, an attachment to sex life, some are really attached to it and cannot overcome it. So that takes a while. But if you chant Hare Krishna 16 rounds a day and you hear regularly of Krishna, after a few years you will be able to overcome that. And that takes a while. That, and also study. You must learn the life of a devotee. How to live as a devotee. A devotee lives in goodness. That, uh, He, he, get, he gets up in the morning at four o'clock, takes a bath, clean, and that uh, puts the lack on his body. And always clean clothes every day, never the clothes of, of the previous day, but goodness, everything clean. Goodness, cleanliness is clear. To, it's near to godliness. So we, it's a lifestyle. And then in the morning, we have Mangal Arti. We greet the deities. We sing before the deities. We pray to the spiritual master. We hear about Krishna from the, from the scriptures. We chant, we chant Japa. That, that fixes our mind on Krishna. But that steadiness shows most easy if we do that in association of devotees. Otherwise, illusion energy, if you are alone trying to do that, very difficult. Illusion energy is in your mind, and your mind will tell you, no, don't do it. There are more important things to do. And uh, you will not be able to overcome it. But if you are doing that in association of devotees, after some time you have a computer fight. And even if you are alone, you will be steady. But we have to first purify the heart. And that's the hard part. But the point is, yeah, association of devotees. That is the way to get steadiness. And once you get steadiness, the purification of the heart starts really. But 
normally a post of 20, 30 years. That's normal. But if the heart is pure, you are liberated. You don't take birth again. But the more you become purified, the more steady you will become. And the more enthusiastic and the more happy. Even in the beginning. If you practice it in the beginning, you will already feel a great satisfaction. But then Ananda bliss comes later. Does that help? Yes. Marsh, is it the after steadiness, uh, after we attain that platform, is that when we overcome the false ego, or at what point we overcome the false ego completely? No, steadiness, in, in, if we are, have steadiness, we will be aware that we are not the mind, but still we are entrapped in the mind. So, steadiness means uh, in the Bhajana Kriya, the practice of devotional service, we have two levels, Anishtita and Nishtita. Anishtita is unsteady, six forms of unsteadiness. I explained one, Visaya Sankara, but there are other six. That. That's, if you overcome that, then you become steady, Nishtita. That's good, but still the heart is not becoming purified. Just by an nishtita, but that's not clear, it's not sufficient. Then you have to give up offenses, ten offenses against the one. You must come in the right mood. And the mood is explained by Lord Chaitanya. In other business, not our business, not man, not man, not in our tikkhtaniya sadhari. That uh, so this one must be more humble than a grass in the street, more tall than a tree. Be ready to give honor to others, and not asking any honor for oneself. In that humble state of mind. You can start to chant the holy name. You practice devotional service without offenses. Without the offense, there are ten offenses. Offenses towards other living entities, towards the spiritual master by not following his instructions. Offense toward the Vedas, rejecting the Vedas or whatever, or not really believing in them. Again, Offense against the holy name, thinking it's imagination. Oh, uh, okay, I, it purifies me, this chanting, so I still go on with my simple life and then I chant, it'll be okay. So the, this, uh, this is a, an offensive mentality, an, a mentality of disrespect, and Krishna does not lie in that. He's in our heart, he does not lie in that. The door remains closed. You will not have, have contact with them. To open this door, you must be humble. And now Dhanam, now Chandra, now Sundra, and Kavitavashi is coming. Lots of times, I do not want any followers, no wealth, no beautiful wife. I just want Krishna to serve you out of love without asking something in return. That's our mood. When we perform devotion and service, we must do it, try to do it, and put all our love in it. That, uh, and then the purification of the heart will take place. So you can chant for five, six years and not have entered an affinity. But once you enter, you become humble. That then you tell Krishna, I'm sorry, I'm here in this material world and uh, I try to exploit your energy for my, for my benefit. But now I become your servant again. Uh, I want to be connected with you and feel this happiness, which is not from this world, this satisfaction of love. And that's and that's the goal of every bona fide religion, love God.
in God is in everyone's heart. If you love him, you love all living entities. That's the point. It's we must undergo a change of heart. The change of heart is not coming. Then we remain here. That's all. Because we desire it. It's like someone embracing a tree. Someone is embracing a tree and says, let me go, let me go, let me go. And then someone comes and looks at you, but, but you are embracing the tree, let it go. That, and that's the spiritual master who tells us, yeah, let it go. Don't, don't be so foolish. That's, you, know, you want to enjoy Krishna's energy, but it's not yours. It was not yours before your birth, and after your birth, also not. And after your death, also not. You think just between you have this body that this is mine, and for my, or, or, and for my enjoyment. It's foolishness. Nothing is ours. It's some idea in the mind. We get things under our care for the moment. And it's our duty what's under our care. What are our so-called positions? To understand it are Krishna's positions. And we use it in the service. We keep it back out of the world. But uh, yeah. if we have that mentality, we will make progress. But therefore, we have to chant and hear. What we are doing today, I'm trying to get into the Bhagavatam after explaining Bhagavad Gita. And there the more subtle things are explained, the more details. But if you do not under if you if you try to understand if we don't understand understand the basics first of Bhagavad Gita, then there's no use. But uh, one must first understand the basics to go ten deeper. That um, yeah. But uh, it's a great freedom. When you realize I'm not a mind, great freedom. But for this, we have to become the observer. The observer. That and not think ourselves the doer. So I'm speaking and I'm observing how Krishna speaks to me. I desire it. I'm also the doer. This is a cooperation. And I'm aware of that cooperation. Without that cooperation, nothing we can do. It's not that we are doing nothing. We are responsible for our desire. And that's the point. The only thing you have to change for spiritual life is changing your desire. But if you desire to exploit Krishna's energy, lust comes. You identify with the body and you get trapped. It's a big trap. I'm this mind, and you cannot get out of it. And only when the heart is purified, you start to get out. And then you become happy. You come to your normal happy stage. You are not, not attached or detached to anything in this world anymore. You know it's Krishna's. It belongs to Krishna. It's not mine. This attachment and detachment is something, an invention of the mind. You have nothing to do with it, with, uh, with, with, that, uh, with, with this so-called good and bad. This world. That uh, you become just entangled by it. Like I said, what's good is for one, is bad for another. It doesn't make sense. But something else. But thank you very much. Shimon Bhagavad Gita Ki, Shimon Bhagavad Gita Ki.